He talked about it there for a little bit of a second. We really don't have many or if that any approved therapeutics for uh, non-relapsing secondary prog pro progressive MS. So talk a little bit more about this patient population, why it's been so difficult to treat and why we mm -hmm. really haven't seen such a therapeutic success thus far. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a, that's a that's a great question. I mean, we, it's it's not for a lack of trying, I would say. I mean, there are compounds that have been tested. I, I think the two studies I think about when I think about progressive MS and, and sort of su successful studies, the Ziponimod study, SPMS, we have the Ocrelizumab study in primary progressive MS. That's kind of the benchmarks, in, 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 if you will. And of course, the Ziponimod uh, didn't result in a, in a label for non-relapsing SPMS. And I think it kind of tells us something about what we think is going on, because if we think simplify, I mean, we have to simplify, you know, in, in, in life because MS is a very complicated disease with, with lots of different aspects. But if we simplify, I, I think we can think about three things going on in, in uh, non-relapsing SPMS and SPMS in general. One thing is there is still some of what we think is the relapsing pathology, the focal lesions, likely peripherally driven mainly, you know, not in the brain itself, perhaps. So, Focal lesions, relapses, not so much in, relap in non-relapsing SPMS. That's what makes it hard to treat. That's a small part of the pathology. Then there is some aging as well and prior damage. Um, probably also very difficult to treat. We'll have to <laughs> decode how we treat aging and how we make the brain more plastic. But it's prior damage aging. But then there is a third part. And there is some inflammation going on. One popular term now is smoldering MS. It's kind of an umbrella term and a lot of different things going on. The normal appearing white matter, there is meningeal infiltrate, at least in some patients. There, there, is, expand, there is the slowly expanding lesions, that, but it's very, very clear. And I think to everybody looking at, at MS that there is more going on than the focal lesions and the T2 and gadolinium lesions. There is additional pathology. And that's the interesting part. We don't, you know, we have good treatment for for the relapsing part and the aging part is hard to tackle you know we have to come in early we have to 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 sort of prevent damage in the brain but there is this other part the middle part where we think that it is possible to make inroads and that's where we think we can uh, make make progress let's talk a little bit about tolibrutinib mm -hmm. obviously a btk inhibitor so yeah. why do we believe that this mechanism of action can be successful in this population specifically yeah. talk a little bit about just the mechanism of action and and you know why tolibrutinib is a little bit different than maybe some other investigational agents out there right now exactly yeah no that's that's a that's that's a very important question and and actually what we said already before seeing these results is that in some compound classes, the compounds are more similar, you know? Um, of course, there may be some, some small differences, but maybe if you look at CD20 antibodies, for instance, I have worked with them before, they, they're relatively similar, I would say. Not, not identical, but relatively similar. If you look at the small molecules like BTK inhibitors, and the BTK inhibitors in, in particular are significantly different in, ter in, in terms of the pharmacology. They, they have different levels of brain penetration. They have different levels of potency. They even have different mode of action. Some are covalent binder, some are non-covalent binder. They have different uh, reaction speeds. So we have done a we have done a bit of work around that. We have done some some uh, studies where we actually put some of the front runner compounds in class, evobrutinib, tolibrutinib, fenobrutinib, side by side, and did um, done comparison. It's now published. It's it's um, work by by a couple of some of the colleagues, in, including. Um, uh, Tim Turner. Uh, so that's published and people can see. And, and, and that shows that there are differences. There are differences in terms of when you combine potency and brain constant and, and, and brain penetration. So we think that tolibrutinib compares favorably in terms of being able to effectively target um, BTK in the CNS based on the combination of potency and, and brain penetration. 